When planning for retirement, most people focus mostly on marshalling together enough money, you know, financial resources, so that they can last the distance. And then maybe at the back of their heads, they have some vague plan, right? Perhaps two or three things to fill their time with. A lot of the times, this is stuff like travel, family. Well, unfortunately, I'm going to say that's not quite nearly enough preparation. We ourselves have been retired for two years and going. <laughs> Looking back on the past two years, I kind of see like six essential things that if you prep for it beforehand, before your retirement starts, I think this can really make such a positive difference to your retirement. So that's what I wanted to bring up and discuss with you guys today. Number one, first and foremost, of course, we have to talk about money. Most people's concern is the amount of money that they have in retirement, whether it will last them till the end comfortably and allow them to afford their hobbies like travel, good food, etc. But I actually think after going through the last two years, building up our financial acumen is just as important, if not more. So what do I mean by financial acumen? I mean stuff like budgeting, tracking, projecting, investing. I mean, if you think about it, the money in your bank account can always be squandered. We all know that story. But I think more importantly, what's going to make your retirement more fireproof is having an ability to generate more money where it came from in the first place. <laughs> so the second essential thing that you can prepare for so that you have a wonderful retirement is definitely the ability to be self-directing and disciplined. Self-direction definitely helps so much with spending your retirement days meaningfully, right? After all, there are no more like work schedules or like demands from colleagues or bosses to help shape your days anymore. You have to be the person to take charge in retirement. There's a study out there actually that shows that for happily retired folks, most of them actually have about 3.6 core pursuits, that's what they say. And the unhappily retired folks tend to have less than 3.6 core pursuits, coming in at about 1.9 core pursuits. That's what the study reflected. I guess it kind of just shows, in retirement, you really need to fill your life to the brim and keep busy with activities you love. And that is a really great formula for happiness. And self-direction will help you to achieve that state, as well as discipline. Because if you think about it, like discipline directly affects the state of your finances, right? It affects whether you stick with your uh, retirement planning, whether you keep fit and active and you get to maintain your health in retirement even whilst you're left up to your own devices. Even to find your core pursuits if you don't have any when you're starting out in your retirement. So discipline and self-direction will be like the building blocks for enjoying your life in retirement. The third essential thing you might want to work on and cultivate for a happy retirement is ta -da, people skills, right? So studies and research have uh, reflected very consistently that the main determining factor for happiness and longevity for most of us is actually relationships, human relationships, friendships, relationship with your spouse and with your family. I guess if you look at most of us, you know, we all have a little need of work on some social skills in some aspect. I mean, some of us are a bit shy perhaps, or gruff, or maybe socially anxious. Working on our people skills really will help us to get along and live happily with our spouse and family members. And also importantly, to make new friendships at whatever age. We all know that making new friends gets a lot more difficult as we get older. I mean, I haven't heard anyone say otherwise. For me personally, making new friends as I get older is the biggest challenge. There's this huge feeling that nothing can replace friendships with people who have known you all your life. But it is also a challenge as I have chosen to exercise true arbitrage in our retirement and we've moved away from home so those friends aren't with us in our present. I find that it takes a lot of intention. I have to consciously push myself to broaden my social circles and make the effort to get to know people on a more intimate basis. I'm also very happy to be able to say that it has paid off in that for the last two years in Bali, I have actually made 
uh, two or three new friends that I'm happy to say are kindred spirits and not just social acquaintances. So that's very nice and it's a huge comfort to our daily life here in a foreign land away from home. Now before we move on, a big thank you to Mumu Singapore for sponsoring this video. Mumu Singapore is an online trading platform for stocks, ETFs and options. I've been using the Mumu mobile trading app myself for almost a year now and I think it's awesome. It's fast, intuitive, trading US stocks is commission free, plus they give free level 2 data and many more perks. Now, for a limited time, when you open a Mumu Singapore Universal account, they'll give you a year of commission-free trading of Singapore stocks, ETFs, and REITs. If you're trading US and Singapore stocks, just switching to the Mumu app will save you so much money already. When you deposit at least 100 Sing dollars and start using the Mumu app to trade, you stand to receive cash coupons up to 128 Sing dollars and even a free Coca Cola share worth around 80 Sing dollars. Subscribe 2000 Sing dollars or more into funds under Mumu Fund Hub, and Mumu will give you cash coupons up to 150 Sing dollars. Subscribe at least 100 Sing dollars to Mumu Cash Plus and they'll throw in an additional 10 Sing dollars cash back. Altogether, that's 368 Sing dollars worth of welcome rewards, absolutely free, just for using the Mumu app. So if you're actively investing anyhow, I recommend checking out the Mumu app using my link in the description below. Now back to the video. The fourth essential thing that you can definitely work on and that will benefit your retirement tremendously is actually courage you're definitely going to need lots of courage in retirement. And I guess this isn't a skill exactly, it's kind of more of a quality. But in retirement, you need a lot of courage to even plunge into retirement. You need the courage to, you know, take that leap of faith, to stop putting it off due to fear of the unknown, fear of financial insecurities. So then it's all about courage at that stage, not let fear and insecurity rule your life and your decisions. It is also the courage to recognize that in life, at the start, at the end, in the middle, the dominoes you need are never all nicely lined up. You know, at some point, you just got to jump into it and then learn to cross the obstacles as they come. So for retirement long term, I guess the biggest issue most commonly is always money. But my perspective on this is that, hey, Budgets can always be reduced, money can always be earned or recouped or whatever happens. <laughs> so I still think that, you know, it is actually beneficial to advocate an approach whereby you get to a point where you feel that you have most of your ducks lined up, you've planned well, you've prepped for it, grab hold of your courage with both hands and then take the plunge. People tend to think of retirement as the end, but it's not. It's the start of a new phase where you should be trying so many new things, new pursuits, new ways to live. And for each of these new adventures, you're gonna need courage to take action. And once you have taken the plunge, you'll find the next fifth thing very, very useful. And that would be a mentality of resilience. Especially in early retirement, there are a lot more decades ahead of you you know, and therefore a lot more chances that things can go wrong, whether it be down to bad financial planning, or perhaps an unexpected health catastrophe, or even sometimes natural disasters. Whatever comes, I guess you will always need that strength of will and the resilience so that you can roll with the punches and then get back up. You want to know that you have the mental strength that even if things go pear-shaped, you won't just give up and lose hope and sit in a corner. You've got to marshal what you've got inside you, go out there, find solutions. Perhaps if necessary, you've got to go back to work, but know that later on, you can return to retirement and try again. So the sixth essential thing that I believe will benefit everyone in retirement is to cultivate an attitude of gratitude. We all know life is a very long journey, hopefully at least, <laughs> and so much of what we chase using most of our years actually doesn't really matter in the big picture once you have taken a step back. And then at that point, 
is when you start realizing the earlier you cultivate an attitude of gratitude and that appreciation for the simple little things that are probably around you everywhere, every day, the happier you probably will be. And it sounds silly, but it's not really automatic. I mean, we all live and grow up and work and go to school in a society that kind of inundates us with messages that we need to reach for more, have more ambition, gives us, you know, like high definitions of success in life that we have to try to jump to reach. And nobody sings the praises of the pleasures of a simple cup of tea, or the importance of family time with your loved ones, or, or just the pleasure of um, being able to take an evening walk on the beach with your dog. <laughs> so I think that it's very important that somebody reminds you that, you know, you can not overlook what you already have, what you're already surrounded by. Growing that muscle of appreciation so that in each and every moment you are present in your own life. You see all the little joys that you're surrounded with every day. And if you live life like that, I think that will help you achieve contentment with just the small stuff around you. And that's what majority of your life in retirement may be about. It's just the small stuff every day. But in my own retirement here in Bali, it is what makes me so grateful and so happy every day that I am uh, surrounded by my loving husband and very interesting and independent little dog that's very, very cute. <laughs> you know, that we have very comfortable, albeit simple house. Um, we have the ability to enjoy good food, even if it's simple stuff from the warrooms locally. We have a garden and beautiful things are growing around us every day. The weather's great, you know, the stuff is good. Yeah, I think this is one of the most essential, simple things um, that's often overlooked simply because it's a matter of mentality. But I believe this essential quality or characteristic could make all the difference for you. So these are the six essential things that I believe are very, very important for you to cultivate and prepare for in the lead up to actually taking the plunge into retirement. I think that if you have these six strong skills and qualities going for you, you will be in a position much more well placed to make the best out of your retirement however long that period may be. Um, let me know what you think of my suggestions, whether you agree or if you think they suck. <laughs> let me know why. <laughs> but uh, in any event, I really appreciate you tuning in and uh, sharing my thoughts for this week. And wherever you are in the world, I'm wishing you a happy Saturday evening. And let's speak again next week. Till then, you take care and bye-bye for now.